following podcast has been paid for and brought to you in part by Front Row Material. In these last seconds, we'd like to communicate out to all those listening that this show is out to the select few, the not for everyone, the outsiders, the left behind and forgotten. It's a cold world, so bundle up. And now your hopes for the cult of Beardo, Big Daddy Beardo. Here we are, guys. Guess who's back? And For I don't, some reason. And I don't mean Big Daddy Bear. You're telling me, but I am still, still baffled why people wanted this show back. Poor life choices. Are people that bored that they want to sit there and listen to us talk about stuff we have no idea what we're talking about? Yeah, pretty much. Like, well, it's a I good can, time. I, I can see why they want to do it Tuesday nights. You know, they come for the guest and they stay for the us. True. But there's nothing here. There's everything here, honestly. I mean, how could you not want this back? I mean, even, even if we do act like... Uh, I do in the bathroom and just wing it. Uh, it's just, it's pure gold. This thing, you know. <clears throat> Man, it's, it's something. And, and and it's not only that. You got damn Boog, who hasn't even been in the freaking podcast chat room for two minutes, wanting to know where his great shirt is. The man wants a shirt. Can we not get him? I want a shirt. Can I not have one? How about this, bud? When you, we meet up in December, I'll, ha- I'll have a shirt in hand for you. I like the sound of that. So, that. That we can do, for sure. And Bug, it's in the mail. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. But anyways. Like the check is in the mail. Uh, welcome to Call to Beardo. I am the Rit. I am joined by two of the greatest friends that money can buy. First off, to my left, the butt. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? And to the far right, well, far left, depends on if you're dyslexic or not. We have finally. He has come back to the front row material family. He is the renegade. Renegade, how you doing? I'm doing good. And book, I don't have a shirt because I am poor. So there's that. Hey, we should make a shirt called uh, uh, Children of the Cob. So you've had Children of the Corn. You have Children of the Cob. He called the beard. That's actually not terrible. Yeah. We need okay. to look into this. Okay. So yeah. Well, right again. So, so, so so what have you been doing? I, I I know that you haven't been on the panel. Last time I sat there and spoke, you weren't home. I stopped by the house. Your mom said that you took the flight out to Los Angeles. I did. What I'm the down. heck were you doing out in Los Angeles? So, I've been in LA trying to pitch some uh, deals to get uh, these adult films made that my good friend, the butt here, has been uh, uh, so kind to film for uh, for me. So, uh, we're trying to get I've, some deals made. I've been working hard. Yeah. That is not one of the titles of the films. Matter of fact, Surprise, surprise. We have a picture deal in the works where you will be starring as Will Smith 
in Men in Back. Has wow. my agent talked to you about this? <laughs> Your agent had said some words that I wasn't quite listening to, but well, probably the same words I say. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna. We, you even have a, a a song you were gonna do for the soundtrack. Uh, I am the man in back. So, there's some. There's more to that. As something we'll work on. So, but but you you said it's a three picture deal. What, what are the other two? Oh no, just a picture deal. It's we guys. They they want to see uh, you know what uh, they're starting with one. So they kind of want to see what you know what he's uh, what he's got to offer. So okay, so there's two. It's a co-star, am I right? So, so who's well, starring? The, the, on, Matt and Black is yes. Yeah. So, so who's the who's the co-star? Because I'm telling you right now, but is no Will Smith. <laughs> I'm not. We have very blaring differences. All right, then you can play Tommy Lee Bones, and okay. uh, and we'll have to cast somebody else for Will Smith. That works. But hey, Renegade, great yeah. to have you back. It's good to be back. It is good to have him back. Sit there and, and enjoy you uh, going on this ride with us. Now, now, Anthony, over here in the over here in the chat, I seen you. What exactly? What T-shirt are you looking for? Are you looking for our brand new front row material uh, T-shirt with the Rhett and Freeland, or the Call to Beardo? Please, please let me know so so I can sit there and and get a uh, get a a surmise from you. Surmise. So. That's a fancy sounding word for well, you. For, ab for absolutely nothing. Yep. Okay, you want to order an FRM t-shirt? What you do, Anthony, you head on over to my name. At underscore the underscore R-I double T. Give me a little DM. And uh, yeah, I'll sit there and take care of it. Hey, but how long does it take you to get a t-shirt from Pro Wrestling Tees? It was like six months. It's bad. No, legitimately, it's it's got to be better than two months. Honestly. Okay. It's bad. When the writ sends out shirts, how fast do you get them? I had it in a week. Fantastic. Damn Skippy. Damn yeah. Skippy. That's and that's the Canada. We treat our Canadian friends a little bit better than the American friends. You're getting in a week plus a day in America. That's not a so, bad deal. So Anthony, get a hold of me. We'll sit there and take care of you. But, hey, it's it's down to business tonight. The Superstar Spotlight. We're going to the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla. We are going to Chris Jericho, baby. Man. So, so but let's start off with you. And why don't you sit there and tell me. Some some fond memories of Chris Jericho. When when did you first see him? Recognize him? You know, well, I seen him in WCW. Uh, don't remember it well, honestly. I guess my first great memory of him that really sticks in my head was the Y two J. That was fantastic. There's just the the hoopla and the hype to it. We didn't have the internet then like we do now, so there was a little bit of mystery to, to stuff. Uh, that That's the biggest thing I remember. The, I shouldn't say the biggest. The first memory I have of him. And, and Jerick was a great worker then. I wish I had seen a little more of his earlier stuff. I have a little bit now, but at that point, I mean, 99, I was 20 years old, so I wasn't you know, sitting in front of the idiot box watching TV too much. 99. Shout out to our man, Liam. Liam Savage, yep. Almost became the, the Canadian rock that year. Could have been a big deal. Could have been. Yeah. Renegade, what about you? What are your what, what are your first memories of of the first ever undisputed champion? 
<clears throat> well, back in the days when some of us hip folks would switch back and forth during the Monday Night Wars from WCW to WWF at the time. And I remember catching him on WCW uh, the night he did the the thousand holds. He was reading that list of all the holds that he does. Um, I remember that. And then I remember him coming out with that. Uh, it was that bodyguard he had. Rufus. Yeah. Rufus. Ra- Ralph, Ralphus. That. Ralphus. Rufus. Something like that. It was, was that the pride. old guy they had? The, yeah, with the, the, the tiny shirts. Yep. Yeah. The, the, that was uh, one of the uh, truck drivers. That, that that drove drove around the the equipment and stuff, and you know he just clicked with them. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, and, but I, you know, the, back then I didn't pay a ton of attention to him. Like he he landed on my radar. I'm like, oh, that's you know that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, but it wasn't till you know he showed up. Uh, uh, but you said there was no internet. Did, did anyone know that he was coming over when that countdown started? His, his first appearance out. I, did anyone know at the time that that he would be debuting that night? I mean, nights like or times like now, everyone knows who's showing up. You know, they were chanting CM Punk before he ever came out. They everyone knows who's showing up. But at that time in '99, I don't recall if anyone actually knew that's who was the one coming out at that time. I'm sure there might have been in the internet circles, but the internet then wasn't what it is now like you had to be in the know and i'm i can barely use a computer now what do you think i was like when i was 20 years old i would have fired it through the wall if i clicked on enter and something didn't happen so if i recall uh well enough it was a pretty good pop when he first uh, showed up the uh jericho said in an interview one time that he swears wwe either leaked it to the people there or handed out signs because he said when he came out that he said he was surprised that there was Jericho signs there. Okay. So. Oh, that stinks. I can't, I, it bothers me when, uh, uh, our debuts or appearances are spoiled. It just takes the excitement out. And like, yeah, you get excited to know, Oh, Hey, you know, I heard the rock's going to be on tonight. You know, I'll do it, but it takes away the, the, the element of surprise where, you know, wow, the, the rocks here, you know, yeah, well, uh, the, not not to get off the Jericho topic, but uh, my one of my biggest uh, shockers was when, and of course, we're not going to say Hall Nash because you know that's on its own. But when it was the night after WrestleMania, The Rock just got done whooping Stone Cold's candy ass. He's in there talking about how he's retiring, he's done. There's no one left for him, and then fucking Goldberg song hits. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, I'm like, I never thought in a million years Goldberg would be in WWE. Well, Goldberg was still relevant then, so it was a big pop. I mean, he's iconic, like him or lump him. Mm-hmm. Goldberg is iconic. I mean, how many matches did he have that he didn't lose and all that going on? No, it, it would have been a huge pop. Oh, what about um, when I'm having a brain cramp here now? Was it Lex Luger showed up at WCW? Uh, the first ever Monday Nitro. When he was still yep. part of WWF well, uh, TV uh, standards, we'll say? It, yeah, uh, WWE pre-recorded the first the next couple weeks. And, yes. Uh, him and, and Luger and Vince were on a uh, gentleman's agreement. Yes. And, and that was a pretty big deal, too, because Lex was huge back then. Yeah. He was over like Rover. So. so but, yeah, Chris Jericho, you know. Uh, his father, great, great hockey player. A good you know. Played 18 years, I believe. You pro. know. Yep. New York Rangers, you know. Played for the Kings. I think he played for the Blues. Uh, there was another team in the NHL as well he played for. Had a solid career. So, so yeah. So, Jericho, even being young, you know, when he was a, a kid, teenager, he he was used to, uh, you know, traveling around, you know, because his father traveled with hockey and everything. 
kind of like what he's done, what he does now in his wrestling career. So he got got a little taste of it way early. But uh, I was a little surprised when I found out that what what got Jericho into wrestling. You know, he he caught, he caught a little glimpse when he was up in there in in the great Canada of uh yeah great country of Canada. Greatest and, country in the world. And, and he went and caught a little stampede wrestling, and none other than the late Owen Hart caught his attention. That's right. So but I, I would love to find out how many young, talented wrestlers we have that Owen Hart was their inspiration. Because Owen was doing things back then no one else was really doing. Yeah, o- Owen is a, a forgotten talent, unfortunately. You don't hear people talk about him. And he had it, you know, ended tragically. We all know that story. But he had a decent career. He wasn't a flash in the pan. Hey, I'm here and, and you're gone. He was around for a while. Right? He, he's definitely forgotten and, and maybe doesn't get the, the, the respect he deserves. Some of that I feel like is uh, goofy gimmicks. And the fact that they never really pushed him to the top, you know, um, he's had great matches against Brett. Uh, one, I think, was even a, a title match. Um, you know, but giving him the Blue Blazer gimmick and, and never really putting him in the main event uh, circle there, I, I think that's a lot of why he doesn't get talked about among, like, even general fans um, because accomplishments really weren't uh, there. All that no, but Blue Blazer, I like that. I thought it was a good gimmick. And when he tagged with um, Coco Beware, High I energy. they were fantastic. There has so, certainly I'll been be, I was a little boy then, so maybe if I watch it now, I might be lukewarm to it. I thought it was yeah. amazing back then. It was there fantastic. Have, there have been worse gimmicks, but yes. uh, to, he was fine just being Owen Hart. Whether he was the Rocket Owen Hart or the... the what was it that? The Black Heart or the, the wasn't the, he the King the, of Hearts one time? The, he, when he, he right was. after he won, right after he won the King of the Ring, he became he, you know the the King of Hearts. Right. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Him just being Owen Hart. Why put a mask on him uh, and and pretend like he's not Owen Hart? Like that's ridiculous to me. Uh, uh, just about as bad as when they did the same thing to Hulk Hogan and. and it's like, all right, it's Hulk Hogan. Why are we doing the, the mask? Game? Yeah. In, in my personal opinion, I think Vince put him back in the blue blazer gimmick to punish him for Brett leaving. Uh, because because Owen was the only one that uh, Vince wouldn't let leave. Nyhart, go. Bulldog, go. Yeah, yeah. You know, Owen, nope, you're staying. And wow. I think he I think he used that as a punishment. Which makes awesome. what happened all of the more awful. Like, like it's as bad as it gets. But when you add in the fact of he, the only reason he did that was out of punishment, allegedly. It was, is, like, it just adds all that much more onto it. And it makes it worse. Yeah. Because it, it didn't have to happen. But why would he do that? Just We all know Vince can be bitter and vindictive and all that good stuff. But... You know, he had a good relationship at one point with the old man, Stu. Long, like, you know, he was feeding talent to him. You know, take care of a lot of Canadian content and stuff like that. It basically a firm system. I don't know if he necessarily would have done it just to punish everybody. Uh, I'm not sure I'd, I'd follow that. I hope not anyhow. Maybe I'm being delusional and thinking that because I, I don't want to think somebody could be that much of a scumbag and, and well, if he were, do if that. He the end result is what they did to Mickey James by shaming her on television because she might have, you know, put on a, a little bit of weight. But he made that they shamed her on television, uh, had the others go out there and call her Piggy James and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, you don't do that without running that by him or it, unless it was his idea to begin with. Yeah, that's true. Fair enough. 
So I, I, I could totally, I'm not, you know, saying that that is what happened, but I could totally see just based on evidence of other things that that very well could have fallen in line that way. Yeah. But uh, Jericho, 19, goes and finds a school. We all know he, he went and found one of the Hart Brothers schools where he met one of uh, our good friends on the FRM podcast, Lance Storm, which they would go on down the line, become the impact players. And, uh, man, he was trained by Ed, Ed Langley and uh, Brad Young. And he completed his training in two months. Yeah, that's what's that's that's crazy. What's shocking, that's... Yeah. Like, like, I sit there and hear Mikey all, you know, uh, talk about the old school mentality where you're not even getting in the ring until, you know, you do all this other stuff first. Getting into the ring is a privilege. And Jericho kind of like, he just breezes through everything. And, you know, two months later, he's getting independent bookings. So can, can you think of any uh, anybody else you know two months and, you know, you're getting bookings and you graduate? No, I mean, that's, that's a special kind of talent that's going to get that. you got to be hand-picked. You know, I mean, uh, Brock, I don't know. I don't know how long Brock was around. He seemed to get uh, pushed pretty quick. Goldberg, we talked about him. Uh, I don't know. Those are the two that pop into my head. Yeah. Well, the, and, and, and that was nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the that's not – the, they're they're being with Goldberg. It was the power plant, then right up to WCW. With Brock, it was OVW, then up to the main roster. You know, back then you had to work your way around the Indies. Get you know, it, it was more you know stability where you got to work, learn, work, learn, work, learn. You know, they didn't have a an NXT, which doesn't really mean nothing nowadays. Used to, like, yes, used to. I think some of the guys that would that would zip through their training as quick as it, he did would be your more of your natural athletes, your Kurt Angles, your the Shawn Michaels, uh, guys like they were very agile, very athletic. I think those guys would do well because there's things you could probably do without ever getting in a wrestling ring, you know, before that. So you get in there, start showing that stuff, learn your couple holds and things like that. And they want to throw you out in the Indies probably pretty quickly because you're very athletic and you can do a lot of things. But I'd like to talk to somebody and find out how what's what about the average is training wise before you ever get to a, your first match. Uh, uh, yeah. two, two months just sounded very quick to me. Uh, uh, I sit there and you know talking on uh, future stars now to a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people like for go through uh, House of Glory, Amazing Red School. You know, six months seems to be you know to a year is is, is what I'm sitting there and getting from a lot of them. Uh, unless you know Red says, "Hey, you're ready to go." And uh, Travis, uh, he corrected me. Lance and Jericho were the thrill seekers. Impact players was Lance and just incredible. Thank you, Travis. So, but uh, on the Rich Eisen show, man, Renegade, you would have ate this up. He was talking about his name being Jack Action. That sounds like something that uh, he might be, you know, working with you with. That sounds like one of the uh, things that I would instruct him on in a scene. He's like, all right, hey, what are you looking for in this scene here? Like, give me some Jack Action. And then, uh, what's, all right, ready and action. So, <laughs> and then he goes to pound town. Hey. Oh, my. Uh, no, actually, uh, that's, I mean, it's amazing how things work out, you know, because that's, he was quickly asked after that, like, no, 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 you know, so what's your real name? I'm, uh, it says that he was nervous to give yeah. them his real name. So he used the name Jericho from a, a Halloween song and i I was uh, i wonder what he was so nervous about to tell him what his real name is unless they would maybe know of his dad and then that would be a thing and then maybe he was worried they'd turn him into a hockey gimmick or something um 
I don't know if they would have done that. They weren't the terrible gimmicks back then. And there are methods. You blaze, you there are methods. Wrong time. There are methods to avoid stuff like that. You can do, you know, there's some things you, that, that way you don't have to come at the wrong time. Yep. Oh, man. I just, but, just uh, bought the Boston Red Sox and I'm good to go. <laughs> I settle right down. I put a clothespin on it. Ah, uh, but man. Jericho's traveling around Canada, him and Lance. And there's some uh there's some great guys that he has a company with. Edge, Christian, Edge, Rhino. Christian, Rhino. Heck, if Liam Savage would have went and stuck through the training in the 99, it could have been one of him. Could have been. You, you never know. know. But uh yeah. Then Jericho pretty much well, but you can tell us, up in Canada, there's only so many, like, established, big wrestling promotions up there. Am I correct? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Jericho, he, he was raised in Winnipeg. So, I'd be, you're getting a little closer to the western side of Canada. Uh, obviously, the Hearts are out of Calgary. You know, that's on the western side of Canada. So, out there, there at that time, there would have been a handful and a small handful, five, six, seven. Uh, there, there's always like your little, very small independent shows. But there wouldn't have been too many out there at that point. Uh, if you'd make a name for yourself, you could. he could have bounced, so he, he did. From one outfit to the next one, everybody would have wanted him. Especially with who he was with. Yeah, there, were, there were five relative unknowns at that time. You know, young talent coming in, but... Five of them turned out to be half decent, to, to put it mildly. So uh, on the circuit, he would have been out there. It would have been a hell of a lot of travel. Because uh, yeah, a big country. Yeah, and, everything's and no pretty much. Are next. Yeah, I was going to say, everything's like spread out the further, the further west you go. Am I correct? All of Canada, realistically. But when you get out west, because... You know, you have the, the Trans-Canada Highway. That's our, our major highway going through. And everything's an offshoot of that. So you could be four or five hours getting or more getting to your next, I wouldn't even say major city, your next significant town. Not even a big city, but just a, a town. Like for, for me here, I'm better than 24 hours to get to, to Winnipeg to drive. Yeah. And that's the next province over. Wow, yeah, because uh, I'm sitting there picturing Canada, like where you guys are, you and you and Liam, like Eastern Canada. Because, but I'm thinking that's because where all your big your big cities are: Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all, but they're not all in like they're like here, here, here. They're spread out a ways, aren't they? Um, Toronto to Montreal, you'd be. Four and a half hours or so. Uh, I'm plunked in the middle of all three here in Kingston. I'm two hours to Ottawa, maybe closer to three to Montreal, to Toronto, two, two and a half hours, depending on traffic, of course. So, I mean, I'm, I'm plunked in the middle there. So, we're lucky that way. Right? I'm, we're more central Canada. Yeah, Travis states the Stampede was basically dead by then. Bruce yep. Hart brought it back uh, a couple of times, but it was the shits. Yep. Jericho was small. Uh, was wrestling small shows on Indian reservations, mm -hmm. and and Travis is over on uh, in Alberta where Jericho started. Travis in uh, Edmonton, I believe. The Oilers. Yep. But uh, half decent this year for now. But yeah, then Jericho's went and took a took a, a year over in Japan. You know, wrestled for Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. I want to say that might be the same promotion that Shamrock was going over to a little bit. He went to Pancras, no? I don't remember uh, Kenny Shams going to um, FMW. Where's, the, where's Jersey Devil or Stack Guy? He would know. 
Was he in here? Yeah. Probably not. I, I, I thought I thought Ken Shamrock might have might have dabbled in over there a little bit with uh going that with and the one the one with Funaki where it was like legitimate, you know, wrestling. Like where they beat the hell out of each other? Yeah, yeah pretty much. But uh yeah, he went and uh he teamed up with uh with Lance as sudden impact, you know, and I guess their in their in guy was uh another guy that trained under Stu, you Ricky. know, Ricky Ricky Fuji. Yep. So that if you if you sit there and think as we are going gonna go through the first little bit of Jericho's career, Jericho's gotta be one of the last guys that dabbled a little bit everywhere he went he went and did the, the japan thing he went and did you know uh mexico lucha libre the learn uh he wrestled over in germany a little bit mm-hmm. u.s before he got his actual start so started all and don't forget he did start up here yeah really like, he legit is a world traveler that, that's unfortunate, something we don't have these days. I guess with the territories being dead, maybe making a very, very small comeback now with some organizations being around to have significant value. But the, a lot of the, the talent now, it's they're from said town, Indianapolis, some damn thing, to wrestle in that little area there and then they're going on versus you don't hear of a lot of guys that have you know, traveled the world. Uh, definitely not like it would have been back in the, the 80s, 90s, and before. It's a little bit different. Uh, unfortunately, with the, the death of the territories. Yeah. But uh, then uh, then he gets the call and to go down to uh, a couple of different promotions, we'll say, in Mexico. Because he, he's, he wrestled for several different promotions over the next, you know, three years off and on, and under seven different monikers too. You know, uh, he wrestled under what Leon De Oro, and I and, and I'm not saying Oreo, like my man Mike Freeland. Forty, oh. R- Renegade, you missed that. If you didn't, if you didn't tune 42. into the into the three year anniversary show, that man put down forty two Oreos in five minutes. While yeah. drinking, while drinking milk in between, did he keep it all down? He kept, did. Unlike that garlic power, he kept it all down. <laughs> he started taking insulin today. <laughs> he could lose a toe next week, but he kept it down. Good for him. You know. Right. Uh, and and that Leon De Oro, which was Golden Lion, the fans voted on. Yeah, I read that. That that was interesting. You know. Uh, he wrestled as you know He Man, Chris Power, but the one that kind of that kind of stuck with him, especially uh, when he went to ECW, Lionheart. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, Travis. Tra- yes. Yeah. Then he woke up, <laughs> poor Megs. Me- oh my goodness, Renegade. Then then we told him to go in and wake Megs up, his wife. She 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 wasn't having none of it. She's like, are you fucking serious? Get the fuck out. She oh, she was yelling at him. Yeah. Uh, I swear he slept on the couch. He had to have. And bought a belly. big bouquet of flowers. Guaranteed. And belly full of Oreos and milk. Yeah. But uh yeah, he when he competed in CMLL, which is Mexico's oldest promotion, he wrestled people like Silver King, Negro Casas, and he the still ult- wrestles just for the record. Yeah, he's like sixty. I don't know about four or five, probably by now. Yeah, he's still wrestling. And uh, then, of course, everybody knows Ultimo Dragon. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like that guy's been around since the invention of wrestling. Ultimo Dragon. Yeah, uh, yeah he's been around a long time. I can't remember. Does anybody, Mitchie, Travis? Do you guys know there was a thing on Twitter? Uh, Ultimo Dragon said he wants his. Last match. I want to say he wants his last match against Jericho before he retires. Not like a that bad would, way to go that, out. That will be his retirement match. Is there any way you guys could check on it for me? How old would he be now, Ultimo Dragon? Oh, he's probably he's probably close to the same age as, as Jericho. 
Because yeah, it seems like he's been around forever. I've always sit there and uh, in our younger days, I've always was telling Renegade about Ultimo Dragon. And what caught my eye was, you know, when him and Sonny Ono came out and he had all the titles. He had like seven, eight titles all at once. Junior heavyweight championships, you know, cruiserweight championships, light heavyweight championships, uh, mm-hmm. you know, middleweight champions. I'm like, this man's a freaking amazing. He was great in the ring. He had a, he ended up messing up his arm, did he not? Had a botch surgery at some mm. point, I think, that might have uh, sidelined him for a bit. Uh, I'm not really sure. But I I, I know, uh, ask a couple of my friends uh, back in high school, that Dragon Sleeper works. How many people did you choke out with that? Two. His only two friends. One of them was Renegade. I don't remember it, but hey. Uh, then it worked. Yeah. It worked. Hey, hey, I remember. Well, you remember Bill, right? Renegade. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember Bill. Uh, I sit there and one time uh, we were just messing around and I put him in the million dollar dream. Just, just joking around, not even very hard. His then his legs went straight down, like legitimate. Like I, I'm like, I didn't think this actually. I didn't think the million dollar dream actually worked. I don't know I. That's that surprises me. So, but uh, yeah, he, he was eleven month reign. Just the NWA, which then that back then the NWA was still you know it wasn't as great it was as the, in the eighties, but it was still dangling you know here and there. He was the NWA middleweight champion. It meant something. It still had significant value at that point. And and, and Mitchie's confirming. He does, in fact. Want Jericho in his last match. Good job. Thank you, Mitch. So, and the credit's going to go out to Cultaholic Tweet for for uh, tweeting that out for Mitch. He can find it. So, then, uh, well, after a little, little uh, shift, a little sidestep, Corny calls him. Which this here kind of surprises me. Because if you guys remember, Smoky Mountain Wrestling with Cornette being in charge and everything. I I would have thought that maybe Jericho would have got his foot in the door in WWE a little quicker. Well, Corny was feeding guys back then. It, exactly. Right? He, had a, he had a good racket going. People beat up on Cornette. Wait, wait, wait. Was, was that a pun? Wait. No. Oh, I was like, he always carried the racket around. Actually, no, I never even thought about it. But he had a decent racket going. He had a good organization there. You know, he a lot of people came, went through there, and went on to some solid careers. And Cornette, for all his faults, love him, hate him, be indifferent. You know, he's got a pretty good mind for wrestling. He might be a little older school, more of a... Uh, wrestling as opposed to wrestling but he did a lot of good stuff there's a reason he's been around forever you know did well, you have any thoughts renegade on smoky mountain wrestling or, or any memories i just remember uh you know knowing that like bud said he had a good thing going down there was some good talent that came out of it um say what you want about Cornette, but i do feel like he has a pretty good uh, uh, a track record in mind for uh, for using talent and knowing talent and things like that. Uh, kind of like Jim Ross did. You know, Jim Ross was known for, if the credit is 100% his, bringing in a lot of good talent and, and, and spotting good talent. So, you know, Cornette might be a little off his rocker, but um, yeah, you know, I kind of miss the ter- territory days, to be honest with you. And I kind of wish that there was a way to bring it back around because I feel like that's how you get the well-rounded wrestlers that come in and not just everybody that learns the same style from the same people and everyone looks and talks the same and all that stuff. Um, You know, some of the greats were, you know, not just Jericho, you know, Shawn Michaels did his rounds, all the past guys did their rounds. and, And I think that's what adds to them being different. You all take away something different 
from where you work to where you've been and it formulates who you then later become and not unlike guitar players who have different inspirations and they all take something from each one and that they themselves become something great and different uh but if you are all trained by the same guy you're all going to play the same way mm -hmm. so uh, you know i think i wish there was a way to kind of bring the territory thing back and that, so if wwe or or aew spots somebody and says somebody decently uh well like a jericho getting in at 19 saying okay do your rounds do like a year uh or two of of the circuit and then we'll take a look at you and see you know what you've become then and then maybe we'll bring you in but um it'd be cool to do that again well it'd be fantastic and something like that would well in my opinion would totally work because we'll take jericho for example he learned stuff in mexico that he would not have learned in Canada. Mm -hmm. Just like he wrestled in Germany, he learned there. When he was with uh, FMW, he learned over there. He wrestled as a tag, he wrestled as a single. He was kind of all over the place learning different styles because regionally, things are just different. Just the way it is. What makes a fan pop in, in Japan is not the same as what makes somebody pop in Australia, right? You know, so anybody that that could do that, put in once again the old style territory system, you're you're gonna gain everywhere you go. You're gonna gain something, and that can only help but make you better. Right? It just builds your repertoire, and everybody wins then. Yeah, yeah, and just think uh, anybody going down to Mexico. In the United States, you're taught to work the right side. In Mexico, it's opposite. You got they're taught to work the left side. Okay. You know, so you you factor in that to the uh, possible language barrier. You know, I, I remember I forget who I was talking. It might have been Jerry. Uh, where if you have a language barrier, you're sitting there with with with, with hand signals. You know, going over the match and everything to try to get through stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, Smoky Mountain he, he teamed up with Lance Storm again. This time, you know, they were the Thrill Seekers. And one thing Cornette knew was tag team wrestling. You know, they went on Well Done, the Rock and Roll Express, the Heavenly Bodies, and Cor Cornette. I, I always picture Cornette with tag teams. You know especially in the early NWA days when he had the Midnight Express. You That's know. what he's known for. Exactly. And and a lot of a lot of Cornette's, you know, mind gets pushed away because of his mouth. Like he's brilliant if he just learns to shut his mouth sometimes. Yeah. Well, that's almost part of his appeal too. Yeah, it's a double edged double edged sword. He says dumb shit. He means the dumb shit he says. He just chooses the wrong words to use sometimes. But, but I, I think Cornette and Liam will probably kill me. But I think Liam, uh, you know, loves Cornette. I don't mind Cornette, but I'm thinking it's the appeal of Cornette does shit. Because he doesn't care if it's good or bad as long as you're talking about him. Now. Yeah. In his now. Smoky Mountain days, oh, realistically, no, the, it was fantastic. Yeah. But but now, he just wants his name to be out there. Probably. It, it, I don't care. It, you know, He doesn't care if it, you're talking shit about him or if you're praising him. You're talking about him. And he's, and he's relevant. Yeah, we're talking about him. It works. Yeah. Yeah. That then Jericho must love over in Japan, but he goes back over another time and he works for uh, wrestling and romance war. You know, off and on from ninety four, ninety six. Uh, you know, what's this here? He he wrestled as Lionheart over there. 
And he, he on November he of 94, he lost to Ultimo Dragon, uh, lost the NWA Middleweight Championship. So, so he held that 11 months. He won it down in Mexico, lost it over in war in Japan. And against somebody that he's, you know, loved work in Ultimo Dragon. Mitchie Mitchy sits there and says uh, Cornet's a very punchable face or has a very punchable face. His mouth has always made you want it even more. He stood for a test of time, if you ask me. And, and he has. Yep. You know. That's accurate. At, Cornet started way, what, mid-80s? Probably before that. Yeah. Long-ass time. I mean, well, when was uh, Moments of Skywalkers? NWA 80, 86, Skywalkers. 86. 87. And he was well established at that point. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, he's, uh, he's definitely been around. But uh, yeah, Jericho sit there and he's over in war and he uh, he lost in the finals for the War uh, International Junior Heavyweight Championship. I, I that's one thing I love. Uh, over in Japan, like a lot of the promotions, you have the heavyweight, you have the you know, junior weight, you have the cruiser weight, you know, they want to, they want to put an emphasis on, on all weight classes and all styles over there Mm -hmm. where, you know, I don't know, but maybe it's just Vince where he can't get a a good, Vince has never had a great cruiser weight division. Is that you, Mike Freeland? What do you mean? Beating up on Vince? Oh no, no! I, I'm just saying that, that as for as much as Vince has done in his whole career, he's never been able to put together a great cruiser slash light heavyweight division. Okay. Unlike the likes of Bischoff, you know, even Heyman in ECW, they, they weren't you know light heavyweights. But if you look at them, they all were Eddie Malenko, you know, Benoit Jer- Jericho. Jerry, Jerry, you know, it, even early days of TNA, the X Division. Yep. You Low know, Key, Petey Williams, Red. V- Vince has never been able to, you know, put together a great uh, cruiserweight division. E- even when he had two hundred five live, anything that that uh, Hunter wanted to do, Vince didn't. Vince squashed it. Anybody ever watch that? Really? Uh, 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 I, when Triple H took over and, and they started to get some storylines and some talent, it, it, I watched a little bit of it. I've and it never went, put it on. So, but uh, yeah, let's see here. Jericho and uh, Gato. Not Grado. Not Grado, yeah, exactly. No Grado. Gato, which Gato and Jerry Lynn... I think it was Gato. It, we're in the uh, Japanese tournament together that I... Uh, sorry, but I'm going to bring this out. I'll, I'll let you look at it. That that, that I got off of Jerry. Kind of. We got to talk about that in person in December. And by it, talk, I mean I'm going to strangle you. Hey, 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 if you want, I'll leave it to you in my will. How's that sound? Perfect. I'll kill you. <laughs> That works. I get it. Hey, but oh, crap. yeah, I'm a I'm a witness now. Yes, you are. Well, unless you disappear too. <laughs> Want to go hunting when I come down, boys? Uh, I think I got plans. When did you say it was again? Not important. I have plans anyway. So, but yeah, you know, so a lot of things going over and and on in war. New titles are created, tournaments, you know, uh, off and on. Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship, him and uh, Gato won. Defeating, of course, Lance Storm and uh, UG. Where the heck's freaking Mike uh, Mike Cook when I need him? Yasaroka. That's where we're going to go. Yeah. So, then, uh, well, then we got... The phone call finally answered back of Paul Heyman to ECW in after 96. After a year or something, was it after, not? After a year. Yeah. 
So, and that is where we are going to pick up next week on part two of Chris Jericho. I like it. So, any any, any final thoughts from uh, about Jericho so far? But hit us up. Um, the fact that he was two months and he was wrestling, that's mind numbing. I mean that that would never happen in these days, as we we spoke about. Uh, I, I wish I knew a little more about his his really early stuff. I mean, I don't think we'll ever see video of most of it because it was so long ago. But it just goes to show that he he stood the the was it the stand the time or how the hell you put it? T- test the time. Test the time. Sorry, I apologize. You know, I mean, he's been around forever, and he's still relevant now. Twenty twenty one, he's still a big deal. People still want to watch him every Wednesday night, Friday night. You know, he, he's had a great career. Uh, for me, he's on my Mount Rushmore. Now that the writ told me there's only four people on Mount Rushmore, because I didn't know that. He's on mine. I think he is that big of a deal. And he's Canadian. Renegade? What about you? <laughs> No, I mean, I agree with that. I think he's one of the great of the greats um, and, and should be in every conversation of when you're talking best of the best. Um, he's had, I mean, a, a career almost kind of like The Undertaker. Where you just keep yourself relevant decade after decade. And, Reinvent uh, yourself. Reinvent yourself all the time. And, and for it to be great, everything he does is great. Um, some of the best storylines... That, that I've ever seen uh, involved him. Uh, some of the best matches. Uh, he's one of the best promo guys ever. So there's there's not much he couldn't do. Uh, so he, you know, if you want to talk about great of greats, and he, he, compare him to Hulk Hogan, who world popular, everybody knew who Hulk Hogan was, and you, he wasn't the best wrestler maybe you know in his in-ring work was subpar um even his mic work was iffy at times um so matter of fact i often wonder what was going on in the 80s because he gave a promo once where he's like when i was a teeny little hulkster there's there's a few things that turned me on there's something about guitars and fine firm women and he goes well later on in the twilight of the hulkster's career my kids turned me on and I'm like, what? Is there something oh in the water back then? So, oh, he, then he said something to somebody about, like, I'm going to crank your knob. I'm like, I, hey, I I don't know what's going on back then, but uh, there were some odd promos, uh, some of them from the Hulkster himself. So, you know, Hulk, Hulk has a lot of, weak, I would say, weaknesses, too. Superstardom, you can't argue that his popularity wasn't wild, but what what can he do that Jericho can couldn't do better? Um, so, yeah, he definitely has to be out there. One of the greatest. But me, me personally, about the one thing I'm getting on his early career is how invested he was to l- want to learn as much as possible, wherever he goes and opportunities just, just flooded him. You know, Canada, Japan, you know, several tours for different promotions, uh, you know, CMLL down in Mexico, you know, get, getting to getting to sit there and work and uh, learn a little bit from Cornette and Smoky Mountain. Like, there, there wasn't nothing he wanted, didn't want to learn. And a lot of people nowadays, they don't want that. Just, just, just push me to the top. Give me this. Give me those paychecks, and and they don't learn the craft. Jericho learned everything that he that that he all the way up to where we ended off at. But that is a uh, a good lesson for everybody in life: is be a sponge. Take in no matter what you do in life, take in as much as you can from everything, and. You really, if you if you compare it to Jericho, there's no telling where you'll end up. You know, he's one of the best in the world at that, and and anybody can really. Who knows what you could achieve if you just 
you know, they would say knowledge is, is uh, power and, and power isn't everything, but knowledge is definitely a, a, a great thing. Taking as much information as you can and learn as much as you can about different things and always be hungry to learn more. Well, and, and, and Mitchie wants to know who's all on the, you know, the Mount Rushmore though. Hogan, Cena, Jericho, San Martino. A lot of Mount mm-hmm. Rushmore has seemed to change with time, I think. Uh, I, I think Freeland and I were talking about that once, and Freeland and I kind of came up with the conclusion you can't go with an all time Mount Rushmore. You got to go, you got to go decades. Generational, something like that. It, well, yes. Even, even then, everything is subjective, right? Who's the best bands of all time? I don't know. What if you don't like the same kind of music I do? So we're not going to pick the same groups. Uh, wrestling. What you see might differ from what I see in somebody. Um, are you talking promo stuff? Are you talking in-ring work? Are you talking, you know, all-around career? There's there's so many breakdowns to it that it really is subjective and everyone's going to have a different list. And it's also a regional thing, too. Because growing up, what I could get on TV was different than what you guys were getting on TV. Right. Right, so a lot of stuff like I didn't grow up watching NWA. Right, tried to follow it, but it's just we just couldn't get NWA where I'm from. And, right? and and for me, not only that, if you sit there and take okay, say, say you're going to say Hogan or John Cena, were they ever really that good if they didn't have the counterparts of a of a Rowdy Piper or a Triple H? You know, you, you got to have that yin with your gang or, you know, they can't be that good. Yeah. 100%. I guarantee. Go ahead. No, 100%. If you, you could be the greatest, whatever it is, greatest wrestler, greatest boxer, greatest musician. But if you don't have, you know, whether it be your opponent or your, your partner or or like me, with, with the films Renegade and I are doing, if my co-star is just laced or like a limp fish, it's no good. Nobody wants to watch that. Everybody's got to have their opposite. Exactly. So, guys, we're going to wrap up this episode. I know people are still pounding in those questions. But, but where can people find you at? Where can get me on Twitter at gotnoof2291. So send me a DM, a follow. If you want to talk, you can talk. No problem. I'm easy like that. Renegade? Well. Can't find, can't find me anywhere, but you can find me here next Thursday at 8 o'clock. Oh, and just, just I'm just going to throw this out there quick. I'll throw out my, my top four, my Mount Rushmore. It would be HBK. Austin, Flair, Undertaker. Not a bad so, list. So comment that in there. Anyone share me your your Mount Rushmore. Like I think I think they're all going to be different, and, and it's just going to be because that's only WWE guys. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and like I said, we're all going to have different lists. Well, okay. Throw it out there, but top four right now: Jericho, Steamboat. Savage. Right on, Mitch. Ric Flair. Now me, I'm going to sit there and go Rock. Flair. Taker. Jericho. And I'm going to say Andre would be number five. But I'm, I'm basing off of Money Drawn. I'm basing on people that entertain me watching. Nothing more, you know, not getting into the, the, the politics of it, the money drawn, the who had a long career or short career, just they entertain me. And uh, yes, Mitchie, I am an 80s guy. Well, hey, well my guys, uh, Flair, Jericho, and Taker all had monster careers, you know, in, in the uh, length. The Rock just chose to sit there and leave. Well, you're not wrong. Yeah, and <laughs> he's done pretty good for himself. I, I mean, he, he's made a couple movies here and there. 
just a couple. Some of them are half decent too. Yeah, Mitchy sits there and says, "Yeah, you know, Andre is a good one because he kind of links the circus wrestling to pro wrestling." Yeah, good call. So, well, that was a good. That was a good show, and well. Uh, good what are you Lord. looking at, man? I gotta sit there and switch it over. Do I have to play the mic? Here? Just send the fucking thing. Click in. I, oh, I am the ret. He is the butt. He is Renegade. See you guys next Thursday, 8 p.m. for Chris Jericho Part 2 on Call to Beardo. Have a good night.